Now that uh, students can get access to the, the information delivery part of learning, the, the lectures at their own time and their own pace, and we also have an interactive portion where we can do uh, problems, uh, a lot of teachers are saying, well, why should I use the scarce class time for this kind of passive, I lecture, people listen, take notes. Instead, we could use that for actual interactivity. And it's, it's different for every teacher, it's different for every classroom, but we've seen classrooms now when, when they come to class, they're doing problem solving. They're, and, and they have the teacher there to uh, help them out, to tutor them, and they have their peers. To, you know, in the classes a lot of us grew up in, if you wanted to help your peer, you'd get in trouble with, you know, Shh, you know be quiet, listen. But now it's like, no, 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 this is what it's all about, getting help from your peers, uh, doing problem solving, doing open-ended projects, interacting with your teacher. Why do you think your average, maybe not this, uh, that's not the way to put it, but how do you think a lot of classes are failing? I mean, what, what's wrong with the American education system in a typical classroom where it really isn't serving a, a student today? Yeah, and, and this is something I go into a lot of detail on in the book. You know, all of the paranoia about our school system, we, we come look at the national rankings, we're like, oh, we're behind Estonia and factoring polynomials, it's the end of the world, America's <laughs> going to lose everything. And, and we're kind of low on science and math. Low on science and math. And we, shouldn't, and we shouldn't get complacent about that. But one thing I point out is, if you look at the last 50 years, and you look at the innovation in the world, it's only been got, getting more and more concentrated in the U.S. If you look at the most innovative companies, you know, the Facebooks, the Googles, the Twitters, they're all coming from, from America. And, and I point out, it's, it's because we're the most creative country, it's innovative, there's fer, uh, failure isn't stigmatized. And so instead of, you know, this model of education that we have, where all the students are batched together and they're passive lectures and they're pushed forward, this is a model inherited from Prussia, a country that does not exist anymore, <laughs> uh, 200 years ago. And so what, what I point out, instead of trying to compare our Prussian model to the Prussian model in Singapore and the Prussian model in Finland, all of which are passive models, we should make our model more American, make it interactive when people come to the classroom, give room for creativity. If you get a C or a D, it's not about failure, it's about, well, make it better then. I find this fascinating in the, in the context of something else, which is like the idea of stereotype threat. And this is this idea that in, sometimes in classrooms, some kids feel like there's a threat response that they will be stereotyped if they ask questions when they don't find, you know, they don't understand something. So the idea that you could go back and if you don't understand it, you could listen to it again on your own and then seek help at another time or in your own pace. So, a gr you know, if girls sometimes feel this threat when they're in math classes, some, they found that African Americans feel this threat a lot of times in, 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 in classes in general, that they feel like they're asking questions that will not, that they shouldn't be asking and therefore they don't do it. And this seems like it gets around that whole concept. Is, I mean, am I right no, about no, that? You're, you're hitting, I, I think, the core problem. When people say, oh, but you know, in lecture I can ask questions. I was like, no, three people have the guts to ask right. a question. Right. And if you're in an algebra class and you forgot how to multiply decimals or you forgot, you don't even know your multiple, maybe you don't even know, and we've seen this in some algebra classes, there's no way you're going to raise your hand and say, wait, I forgot my fourth grade math. Okay, right. you've taught yeah. more classes on Khan Academy than Harvard University has offered since its founding. What is your vision for future of education? globally we want to keep growing uh, we're you know get to hundreds of millions of students we've translated our content into 12 languages it's being used around the world uh, we want to become more interactive and, and we hope that the conversation isn't just about you know a lot of the within this Prussian model how do we tweak the system but it's about time it's been 200 years that we can actually fundamentally rethink the model so it's not this passive system it's it's much more